Now that we've covered the special statutory and constitutional law that applies outside the United States and in national security contexts, we're going to turn to some specific government surveillance programs. We're going to explore some of the most controversial programs that have come to light in recent years. There are several that we're going to focus on. The first is the National Security Agency's Domestic Email Metadata Program. That program is no longer active, but it established a legal foundation for other bulk surveillance programs. The second program that we're going to discuss is the Domestic Phone Metadata Program run by the National Security Agency. It is perhaps the most controversial of the NSA's surveillance programs, at least within the United States. We're going to explore the program's legal underpinnings and how it functions. Next, we're going to work through the PRISM program. That's a targeted surveillance program, not a bulk surveillance program. And it collects communications content, not just communications metadata. We're going to once again discuss the legal basis for the program and how it appears to operate. Fourth, we're going to discuss the upstream internet collection program that the NSA operates within the United States. The legal arguments surrounding that program are reasonably well known now, but the technical details of the program are still mostly classified. So we're going to encounter some enormous open technical questions about how the upstream program works and what its privacy impact is. Last, we're going to discuss surveillance programs outside the United States operated under Executive Order 12333. It's the primary legal authority used by the United States government for national security surveillance. There is very little transparency in these programs, so I'm going to work through what is known and flag what isn't known. So, there's the lay of the land. Let's turn to the substantive material, beginning with email metadata.